Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Vindo with Robert Hollinshead. Uh, good morning to you, Bob. Good morning, everybody, and Shawnee in particular. How are you doing, pal? Good, sir. I was uh, so. Here, here's an observation I've been noticing. So they, I've seen more people uh, leave the wholesale marketplaces or or dealerships and go into real estate in the last couple of years. Now I know real estate's been hot. It's not now, but it's been hot. And so many people are just jumping ship, it seems, into real estate. So what do you think? Do they, is is automotive a training ground for good real estate agents or is there something else happening here? And it's really comical that you mentioned that because I was thinking about that the other day subliminally because I've watched, actually, it's not like a trend, but I have watched a lot of people that either are already in the uh, automobile business, whether it's used car, new car, whatever it is, and and simultaneously do real estate because obviously there's a lot of tax advantages and different things with latent income and all the rest of that, right? But as I thought about that a little bit more, it, it started to get a little bit on the interesting side, right? So... Um, when you think about, um, you know, the car business going back whenever you want to go back, but anything pre, you know, loony time or pre COVID time, right? Where any ant could get up in the morning and go make 8,000 on a car, uh, during COVID, right? It, 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 and, it, and it lasted long enough, a year and a half or almost two years, almost two and a half years when you really break it down, right? Where there's never going to be cars again. There's chips that are flying around the world, but not in cars and all that, Right. It, it got to a point where it wasn't really a skill set involved. It was just a question of taking numbers and then seeing how bad you could smush people with 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 a deal, right? And and that kind of almost like settled in to be the norm. And what happened is when you think about the skill set, when you first went to get your first job in the car business, I don't care what level, you know, the, whoever was interviewing it, if they were minimally honest. They'd be telling you this is not an easy business. This is a grind, man. No matter what you say, the consumer knows you're a liar. No matter what. In other words, even though we know all buyers are liars, you understand? They realize that two things happen. In the car business, car people are the scum of the earth. In other words, that's the average mindset of humans. We're below lawyers, which obviously lawyers are 15 levels lower than us, and politicians, et cetera, right, or or whatever. So, you know, it's just it's just part of how we get categorized in in general, right? And and when you stop and think about it, as a as a new person, it's it's all about getting up, working hard, being honest, try to do your best, and go, you know, not step on other people's toes. If you're not up, don't take ups, but take ups anyway, because you got to. Because if you don't, it, you know, all the whole thing. COVID comes along, all of a sudden it's an order taker time, and it, people start to like skills dissipate. It's kind of like when you're muscle bound, right? You're an athlete and you could run 70 miles in two minutes and you know, you could press bench press 12 times your weight and so forth. And then you stop. You don't have to do that no more. Whether you got married, you got a girlfriend, you don't have to look like, you know, Arnie Parney any longer, right? In other words, uh, 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 and all of a sudden you're like a blubber gut, like you can't get up the steps without going out of breath. You get out of shape. So COVID, in my estimation, in a lot of different regards, you know, it's almost cross-sectional in every single area of the car business, wholesale, retail, maybe it's even in parts and service, right? You start to get a little bit uh, auctions, auctions, showing no, no disrespect intended here, pal. You, you kind of get a little bit, um, let's say, blubbery, if you know what I'm saying. Now, all of a sudden, we're coming out the other side. And, and in other words, tulips that are popping up that popped up during COVID and they're looking pretty and they might even smell fairly good are starting to get revealed. It's kind of like the first heavy rain in spring where the tulips lose their petals and now they're just a stick sticking up in the air, right? It, you know, it, you have you have to actually rely on a certain degree of skill and it's not easy because now uh, it's we're back to, you know, you got cars in stock, strike, no strike, you got cars in stock and you actually have to sell something and you have to discount something and you have to over allow on something um, uh, on and on and on. Right. And what you wind up with is, you know, like people got to actually, um, I would say, really start to uh, hone, you know, get back in the gym um, in your brain in terms of uh, uh, how you're working. And uh, I'm seeing it more and more. So that was 5000 words or less. To say, yeah, I'm definitely seeing people 
that are, they might even been mediocre in the car business, but using the same skills that you learned in the car business, in the showroom, at an auction, whatever you want to talk about, reconditioning cars is exactly the same thing as flipping a house. There is zero difference between flipping a car, taking it to the next level. In other words, defunking it, bringing it to the next level, placing it in a marketplace where there's actually you know, aggregated, logical, best-end users and creating arbitrage, right? In other words, positive arbitrage. Same thing in the, in the in the real estate business. And if you use the same things, like, you know, not cutting white walls and putting wire wheels on, but in other words, doing the guard, put the other thing up, you got a different face on it, and you put lipstick on. In other words, it, it turns out to be a an arbitrageable thing. And I'm, I, I do know of people that have actually got out of the car business, as I said, in other words, that, that were mediocre, good, but mediocre good, that have become really successful in the in the in the real estate business using the same skill set that a mediocre would use in the car business. This is not a suggestion everybody quits and goes to get their real estate license, but it's just a funny observation that you brought that topic up. And I was maybe it's a Kreskin thing, and, and I was thinking about it during the week. Uh, I don't want to name names, but there's a couple people uh, in areas where I am in South Florida and up in. Uh, 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 up in the, the uh, southeast Pennsylvania area that uh, have become very successful uh, leaving the car business and getting into the real estate business. It's weird, isn't it? But you think about think, uh, it, it's, it, it, yep. No, I was just going to agree with that and say, I think, you know, you're right. That training that people have inside of dealerships or inside of auctions do really equate to different industries. So, mm-hmm. it's, uh um, I, I, I think it's a trick tree. Now, I don't know what this actually means in terms of your uh, little program here, Sean. It means probably absolutely nothing. But it's just a, uh, a thought that was costing through the, the brain and figured we'd uh, let it fly out of there. You know what I mean? Um, yep. So anyway, next week, I think we have a couple interesting people popping on, if I'm not mistaken, Sean, right? We, you, you, we never actually have made an effort to do that. But I think we have uh, Brian Kramer in queue. Uh, and we also have uh, Johnny Wolf. I think he's uh, said that he'll come over and, and we'll shoot the, the, the crap with him a little bit. Um, and I think we have Stephen Warner also from Automoto HR which I think will be an interesting uh, conversation. He has an interesting background. Uh, and uh, the product that he developed, uh, it, there's dealers doing very well with it. It's the HR side of uh, um, what car dealers do, how they find, train, and maintain uh, with um, uh, compliance uh, um, employees. It, it, there's a couple interesting folks there. I think we're scheduled next week with Brian first. And uh, I think he'll expose his intellect. This is an extraordinarily uh, sharp, uh, well, uh, uh, you know, from an automotive IQ, it's one of the top IQs I've ever encountered in my uh, uh, 50 years I've been doing this. Should be fun. Excellent. We're looking forward to all three. And so tune thank in you. and uh, thank you, Bob. Thank you, my friends. And have a lovely week. <laughs>